Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming a more Planet Coaster in Heinrich's Hideaway. Beautiful park that I am indeed very proud of. I've allowed a little bit of time to pass, not too much, just enough to start getting a little bit of money. You can see we actually had a monthly profit of almost $8,000 there. It just fluctuates so darn much, it's pretty fun. Uh, I did change out some challenges. Oh gosh dang it, Pathos. Uh, we did get the um, the challenge for having no entertainers quit for two months, which feels like a personal record, so I'm happy with that. And I also got rid of the challenge for 74 rooms in a hotel, just because I don't anticipate that I'm going to do that anytime soon. So why have it taking up my, um, my three slots, right? Just get rid of that. Just delete the thing. Now we make room for some new ones. Hopefully we get a better challenge that we can actually make use of soon enough. Obtain an overall staff happiness of at least 100% for three months. Wow, okay. Well, that seems like a lot of freaking fun. Again, all the rides are, you know, still breaking down. You can request an inspection a bit on the early side. And uh, every time it is inspected, it does reduce the wear and tear. That is to say, it actually goes a bit more toward the green. So if you find a ride that is actually struggling a lot, like this one... Apparently was before breakdown, but uh, let's say insanity. I can request an early inspection. It'll go up by like 10%. And what you can do, actually, is just as soon as they finish here. Watch this. Okay, I'll show you exactly what I mean. He's going to wait for the ride to finish because it's obviously extremely dangerous. For this guy to just walk on in there while there's giant spinning... Whatever you want to call these things. I don't know. Arms of doom. So he's going to do a quick inspection. You can see it's about to go up. Push, okay, and I can just immediately request it again, and he's right next door, so he should turn around and head right back over here to improve its wear and tear. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to, you can just keep spamming this and get a, uh, a ride back up to maximum speed, though realistically nobody wants to micro that too much. Eventually, the reliability is going to be down enough you will have to pay for a refurbishment, which at some point is almost like buying the ride all over again, which nobody likes to do. Gosh dang it, another ride bites the dust. Oh, they're all freaking just dying on me. Why? Why are you like this? Guests think multiple rides have long queue times. Really? You don't say. Tell me something I don't freaking know. Uh, we got a lot of thieves that are going around. The teacups and rocktopus apparently are too expensive. Oh, that's actually true. It looks like the teacups don't have pretty much anybody here at all. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. Let's reduce the price. Uh, Rocktopus, probably the same deal. They're no longer new rides, so obviously people are now finally stopping paying. More thefts in the park, blah, blah, blah. Now look at that. The monthly profit was only $800 this month. I'm telling you, it's insane how much it fluctuates. Really weird how inconsistent it can actually be. How are our guests actually doing right now? Well, they're a little bit hungry and thirsty. But, I mean, I've, it's not like the sources don't exist they're just probably waiting in uh, queue for so long that they are actually aren't getting um, they actually aren't getting themselves satisfied. You know, one thing we could do on the energy front, though, right? Since guests do have low energy, you could just place down benches and stuff and give them places to rest, and that's certainly one thing you can do. Alternatively, if I were to go to this is a bad example. Hang on, let's go over to uh, let's say you. Okay, so we want to get to this. Gulpy, thank you. Is this an area where we can add on some, uh, maybe this is a bad example too, actually. I'm trying to figure out where I can add some condiments. How about chief beef? Surely you can throw something onto a hamburger. Okay, finances, items for sale, extras. There we go. Okay, I'll put on some ketchup, and that's going to make people thirsty as well as happy. Uh, more energetic if we put on gherkins. Maybe. I'm looking for things to give them energy. So cheese makes people happy. They'll be a little less hungry, but they will be thirstier. All right, so ketchup and cheese and bacon. I mean, this is probably going to increase the cost of uh, making my burgers in the first place. But, yeah, let's throw on some lettuce as well. And you know what? Mustard. Okay, so now we got some good condiments. The important thing being, this is actually going to be a way of restoring energy a little bit faster. Screamer is broken again already? What the crud, dude? All right, screw it. That's it. I'm finally creating some work rosters. I should have done this a long time ago. We're just going to create some rosters of only like a couple of rides. I don't care how many times my mechanics are over-inspecting. I don't want these things breaking down so much. It's ridiculous. Okay, now I've got four loops that we can use, which actually covers all of my rides. Three regular rides and one roller coaster for each loop, which is actually kind of perfect when you really think about it. It's very satisfying. Mechanics. I need one of you guys to be free roaming, okay? 
and the other ones are going to go on loops. So let's have the highly trained people go on loops, and the lesser trained guy right here, he can just go and wander and fix things randomly as is necessary. Now, we did have some sort of a mission to make sure everyone was super duper happy, right? So if I give you guys a little bit more pay, will that do the job? Uh, probably. Actually, most of our guys are pretty darn happy as it is. I'm really not seeing a whole lot of complaints from my staff, with apparently one exception right here. What the heck is your problem? You could do with more cash. Oh, aren't you a greedy little booger. Fine. I'll do this. You'll get paid, don't you worry. Got a couple new rides I can unlock. What do we got now? We have the Forge. Okay, this is a pretty nice thrill ride. Tends to make people pretty happy. And then Never Goes Out of Style becomes the Hyperspin. Ooh, I've seen these at some carnivals. That's considered a family ride. No, this must not be what I'm thinking of. It must be something totally different. Okay, Carousel into the Sky, completely gyroscopic. All right, well, I definitely want to research more thrill rides. I don't think I need a track ride. This looks like just a regular train to me. Dangling delights. How about Summit and Plummet? Yeah, it's cost me a bit of money in research, but since I'm sitting at about $22,000 right now, I feel like we can invest in a little bit of new stuff. Let's go ahead and look at opening up a new section of the park. And in today's video, I would like to try building my own roller coaster from scratch, if that is at all possible. I think that would be kind of fun. The good news is this forage should actually be a hit. Excitement value of 5.6 for a couple thousand dollars. That's almost roller course, uh, coaster worthy. Pretty good fear value, a little nauseating, but you know, we can probably account for that just by tossing in another bathroom or something somewhere. Uh, let's see, this little fairy tale village bathroom right over here would probably do the job just fine. There, if you need to puke, do it in there. All right, now we've really stacked up a pretty good amount of cash. $40,000, and definitely getting the loops going for our mechanics has improved workloads quite a bit. Uh, I was previously seeing that almost all of them had a low workload, which means they're not spending a lot of time traveling around the park, so they're getting things done a lot faster. That's all pretty nice, absolutely. Uh, let's go to research. We do have another roller coaster we can unlock. It is in descent. Looks like some sort of a steel... That's not a standing coaster, is it? Could be, those do exist. Completely gyroscopic leads to the cube. I don't know what that is. Don't be afraid of heights. If anyone says that, it usually means you should be afraid of heights. Is it a water ride? Is it a coaster? I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and research the pinnacle of speed because I wanna see what's gonna be involved in that. Uh, the cube, wow, very high excitement value of almost six. Very scary ride, though, apparently, but very, very cool nonetheless. All right, sure. Let's go ahead and play. Wow, it looks like some sort of a giant Tauros ring kind of a thing. Ooh, that does actually look kind of terrifying. Okay, we're going to tuck you away in a corner, let's say back over here. We'll just go ahead and place down our standard entrances and exits and so on. Let's see if we can get yet another ride added onto the roster. I think that what I'm going to do from here on out is probably place down like three regular rides and then one coaster or something like that and then just keep creating mechanical loops and as long as our rides stay up and a running our finances are actually looking pretty good we're making a ton of money in ticket sales just can't afford to have any downtime that's the trick this looks really trippy doesn't it look at that so many axes of rotation I want to ride it. Hang on. Oh, okay. Yep. I like how their cheeks are kind of flailing as if the, you know, the air is just whipping through them. Okay, this is... Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I'm going to get motion sick just watching this. Whoa. Okay. No, no, no. We'll just do a little cinematic view like this. There we go. Okay. Oh, that doesn't look nearly so bad. Of course, the ride's coming to an end, but even so. Dang, man. That is a... Uh... That is absolutely an intense ride. But as long as I can charge $11 per ticket for it, I'm happy. It looks like I have unlocked a new roller coaster called the Spire of Shock. I'm trying to place it. Where is it? Whoa. Oh, yeah, okay. I call that lazy ride design. I mean, I'll bet you it goes real dang fast, but come on. Nah, who wants to build one of those? That seems kind of lame. Uh, we could possibly paste down the Copperhead Strike with an excitement value of 6.13, which doesn't seem like the worst thing in the world, also doesn't seem outstanding. Eh, 
I mean, this is sort of okay, actually. It's not the worst. It doesn't quite fit the theme, but it's okay. Uh, we already got Grendel. We could place down Puff the Magic Dragon, though. Yeah, see, now that's awesome because it fits the theme, and I don't have to spend all my time decorating the dang thing, I hope. Wait, where's the freaking entrance? How does this... Where... Okay, th Okay, so that is the queue line right there. Okay, so how do I... Interesting. Usually you can just hit shift, and it automatically goes down to the ground. In this case, I have to manually lower it all the way down here. So I could place it something like right over here, I guess. Now, this does add dragons in here. Hopefully that doesn't bother people at all. But yeah, if I do something kind of like this, it still fits nicely with the theme of the park. It's a really cool looking ride, and I want to ride it. So let's hop on. Whoa, wait, slow down. Okay, there we go. So we got a little bit of theming. There's a dragon that we're riding in. It's not so bad, hang on. Yeah, okay, look, he's a fearsome dragon. All right, down we get. What do we got? Wow me. All right, pick up a little speed. Not bad. Ooh. There's a sleeping dragon in that cave over there. So far, it's a lot of spinning. Okay. Big dragon right there, animatronic. Moving around. That one looks pretty good. I wish they breathed a little fire at you. That would be even better, but no. Doesn't appear that that's gonna be the case. These things, I think, are... I thought those were brakes, but maybe they're actually launching me. How long is this train? Oh my gosh, I just realized we got like 18 cars in this thing. No wonder we're picking up so much speed. All right, sure, why not? And then down you go. I mean, you gotta admit, the theming is great. This is probably better than anything I could build. Created quite a beautiful environment, weaving in and out of the nature. Okay, down underneath some rocks. Sure, why not? So I have no idea how exciting this ride is gonna be. It's one of the reasons I wanna test it and find out. Because the Steam Workshop doesn't always tell you what the rating is going to be for the roller coaster. Hey, there's a knight walking up and down there. I saw that, that's an impressive animatronic. Not many people can design a robot that actually can like walk around, you know? All right, so that's officially in. So, what would the ride's sca uh, scaling end up being? 2.49? Aw, oh, man. All right. Sorry, Mavs Dragon. You're just not that exciting, it turns out. What about the Matterhorn Blitz? Doesn't seem too bad at 4.15. We already got an F this. Splash? Eh, it's got some special effects and stuff, but this, again, seems better for a desert. Boo. Maybe I should just wait until I've researched a couple more coasters. Hmm. That seems fine. Let's go ahead and reveal this. What do we have? The Sun Flare. Ugh. It's one of those giant, super tall rides. I don't often like those. They just sort of are an eyesore for everybody. All right. What's the power of rubber? I've been wondering what the power of rubber is for a very long time. You know, maybe this is actually a good opportunity just to design my own roller coaster. I did say that I wanted to do that, didn't I? I think I did. Hang on, let's go ahead and figure out what the pinnacle of speed is. The zenith. Okay, that actually could be really good. Hang on. What do we unlock with that? Altitude, $32,000, eight excitement value? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, wow. It's kind of like just another one of those tower coasters. It just goes extremely freaking high. That's got an excitement value of eight? You know, I actually find myself somewhat disappointed by that. Gosh dang it, I thought you guys had good taste. Apparently I was wrong. What else we got here? Anything? Nope, absolutely nothing. All right, you know what, we're designing our own coaster. And if we are gonna try building our own roller coaster, I like to do that in the sandbox just so I have the freedom to build as much as I need to wherever I need to without worrying about money or space or park management or anything like that, okay. So we know that we have access to something like this hyper coaster, which could be kind of fun. Now I don't think this has access to like any loop-de-loops or anything. So we'll have to make do with what we've got. Uh, we'll try kind of increasing the size of the station so I can have longer cars and fit more people in there. 
Then we need to apply, let's say, some chains. We're going to get these guys lifting up pretty darn high, like so. Then drop it on down a little bit, like this. Turn off the chains, and down it goes. 65 degrees is going to pick up a lot of speed. Now, what I can't seem to quite figure out then are turns and how best to make those happen without going for too much fear value. Uh, because every time I've attempted building one of these roller coasters recently in preparation for today's video, the result often ends up being I have like a fear of 12 going into my first big turn and then it just stays incredibly afraid the entire dang time. And I'm not really too sure why or what I'm exactly supposed to do about it. But I don't know. I mean, what if I go for like a really big turn like this, get a bit of banking in so I don't have too much G-force, uh, I hope. We'll kind of turn down this a little bit. We'll go for something like this, and then we're going to go for a big turn down. Then we want to kind of start evening it out like so. We don't turn quite that much. And then start working your way going down. Now, see, to me, I look at this and I think, this is probably about as gentle of a turn as I really can make it, or ought to make it. I don't know. So down we get. Then we start evening out. Then we start going for another big upsy-daisy. Now, remember... A lot of roller coasters ultimately just come down to physics. We got all our potential energy established right here. It's never going to get any more energy in the car via kinetic than we have it right here. So I can never get higher than this point. And then once you factor in friction throughout the ride, you should have one large drop and get progressively smaller and smaller drops as time goes on. At least I think that's the way it should probably work. So we'll do something like this. And then maybe start banking into a small turn like this. Like that can't be that scary, right? Uh, maybe it can, I don't know. Do something like this. And then maybe start banking into a turn this way. Sharpen it up a little bit. And then we'll kind of do something like this. Kind of start evening it out. And then over here, what I want to do is probably set up at least a couple of block sections. And then we can hit auto-complete, and it tries to finish it for me. Okay, so we got something like this. Now we'll do some testing. I'm gonna hop on board, and let's see what we can find out. So we're going up the chains. Gonna pick up a lot of speed here. Very concerned about how much fear value we're gonna get, but okay. So coming over that initial drop, it's gonna be a pretty steep doozy. Picking up some serious speed. Get a bit of hang time. And then heading back down. And then back up. And then back down this way. And then we get a kind of a weird curve. That looks a little rough. Block section and done. Okay. So the question then becomes, oh look, there's so much freaking fear value. So where exactly is the problem then? Let's go ahead and map this out. Obviously traveling up the chain, no problem. It's going to be right here that we have all the fear. And this is where I get stuck and I can't quite figure out what I'm supposed to do. Yep, there it is. Okay, so this all seems fine. This curve, yeah, it's all the turns. Turns at high speeds apparently freak people the heck out. So maybe I need to find ways to smooth the turns. Like, can I change the angles a little bit? Can I set multiple pieces of track? 
No. Okay, I'm trying to smooth things out a little bit. My thought being... If I can control the angles a little bit, maybe it's not going to be quite as scary. I have no idea if that actually makes a big difference or not. I mean, it sure looks a little bit smoother. Put that up over here. Smooth it out. Smooth it out. Kind of tightens it a little bit. You can kind of just select giant sections of the track here. Alright, so this part wasn't so bad, so that's all fine. So it's really going to be right here that's the problem. I'm trying to smooth it. Maybe the issue is right here. Can I sort of... Yeah. I can kind of simplify the height a little bit. Smooth it out. Smooth it out. Can you smooth out the same section multiple times? Kinda, sorta. Okay. Now let's try doing a test and see if just smoothing things so it's not quite as janky makes a difference. I don't know. I never really tried that before. It's a little bit different than building things in Roller Coaster Tycoon, so I'm trying to learn here. Nope, that's still a pretty good amount of fear. That's a lot of fear still. Gosh dang, it just doesn't freaking stop. Also, it, it exceeds the G-Force limits. So, where is the issue? Is it the lateral G-Force? Okay, right there. And right here. So, where the G-Forces are the highest, that's where I'm having my problem. Okay, okay, yes, all right, I'm sort of understanding the problem. Uh, how exactly I fix that, I don't freaking know. Well, maybe I just don't know how to build a really good roller coaster. I've been trying it for about an hour and a half, and I just can't seem to quite get the turns right. I can get that initial drop, but something like this, like this is a pretty tight turn, and for some reason, I absolutely cannot mimic something like that. That second turn right here, for example, this is where I seem to get uh, my fear value up to like 7 plus, and it stays that way for the rest of the ride. I really don't know what it is I'm doing wrong. I certainly am trying to use a smooth feature to uh, get my banking correct, but it just doesn't seem to be quite enough. I think part of the trick might be that I'm going too fast. Could very well be that I need to apply some brakes, but either way, it's about uh, 12.30 a.m., so past midnight, and I have to upload this video tomorrow. So we're just going to have to accept this for what it is. And I guess I will just bite the bullet and throw in this weird-looking altitude ride. Am I thrilled about it? No, but, I mean, if it makes me a freaking ton of money, I will accept the loss of my principles by building a really ugly, stupid-looking ride. Let's see, we'll place you right up over here, I guess. Seems fine. $32,000. That is not cheap by any stretch, is it? Okay, we'll place down an entrance right here. Exit back over here. Actually, probably should put this right there. There we go. And then we'll just connect this up to the park. There we go, we can add in a whole new section down over here, a whole mess of shops and other facilities for everyone to be able to use. And then, yes, one super duper roller coaster coming right up. Let's go ahead and test this puppy and see exactly what happens. I imagine it's going to be one really long vertical ascent and then vertical drop. Oh, this is going to go fast, isn't it? It's even got that little... Yep, there you go. Whoop, okay. Whoosh. I was going to say, it's kind of got that pause that you expect. And it's like, oh, at any second now, they're going to they're gonna absolutely bamboozle me, aren't they? And yeah, sure enough. Okay, yeah, admittedly, you know, this seems kind of fun. It's it's certainly fast. How do they decide how to bank? That's what I want to know. There's, there's a lot of physics that's involved. I assume that banking, with every major turn, is going to reduce 
the uh, is going to reduce the lateral G's at least to some extent, and yet for some reason it seems to only make things worse for me. But okay, so there we go. I got a couple of achievements apparently because we're going super duper fast. I'm going to absolutely open this sucker up, and I'm going to charge a whopping like I don't know, fourteen dollars to start for anyone who wants to ride this death trap of a ride. In the meantime, I like that it kind of passes through a small little village alley right along here. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, actually, for the most part, I think we're about finished with this park. I mean, I would have loved to have built my own roller coaster and such, but doesn't seem like that's going to end up being an option before I have to end this. I'm actually going to end the series in today's video, which wasn't the original intention, but uh, just based on some viewership and so on, uh, I think I would like to move on to a few other things. Let's see, we'll place down a few more oak trees and such while we wait, though. Uh, the idea that I had for another park, which I, I honestly thought would be really cool, but it depends a lot on what you guys think. Um, I was thinking a steampunk-themed park would actually be really awesome to look at. There is a good amount of content available in the Steam Workshop that is steampunk-based, and I thought, you know, if we based a park around that, then uh, that would be a pretty unique theme, something you don't see pretty much anywhere else, and it would be really exciting and pretty cool to look at. But you guys have to let me know in the comment section what you think down over there. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom forward a little bit. I want to get people over here into this new ride. And while we're at it, let's go to park management. Have I finished researching? I did actually finish researching the power of rubber. That's the F-25 coaster. I have absolutely no idea what that is. Uh, for marketing campaigns, we're going to go ahead and start up a TV commercial for, let's say, a late night talk show. There we go. Okay, so a bit of marketing will be good there. Guests, for the most part, are pretty happy, if not a little tiny bit thirsty. Staff should be feeling pretty good right now. I say that. I, I guess I did sort of just hire a whole bunch of new people, didn't I? Yeah, we should probably train them up. Well, we did unlock a couple more rides. We now have access to the Gears of Fear, which that looks pretty cool. Very sci-fi. Actually kind of steampunk. What do you know? Huh. It's like the game has actually heard my cry, and now it wants me to build the dang thing. But yeah, we have that. We also had access to an actual hanging coaster, so now we have the adversary as our option. Seems kind of fun, but obviously we don't have the time or the funds to be building that out right now, but I am going to be ending up this video and this little series. This was mostly just a taste of what Planet Coaster does have to offer. At the end of the day, I'm actually pretty pleased with how this park turned out, and there is a lot more room for us to be continuing the expansion if we so desired. We can just travel through the park here. Like, there's a lot to see, a lot to do. It's pretty darn fun. This is a great game. I really enjoy it. I just need to learn a bit more about the physics of roller coaster building. That's what I need to do. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed these last couple of episodes. I know I enjoyed making them. Please consider hitting that like button, leaving comments, and subscribing if you did enjoy. And I, of course, will see you guys next time.